All right, so let's start on the first steps to making our VPC module, the module in Terraform that we are going to set up to create our private network. Now, I'm using this tool, which helps us figure out IP address ranges because it's kind of annoying to figure out the math of how CIDR notation works. CIDR notation, if you're not familiar with it, is classless interdomain routing. It's just a notation that allows us to do some math on IP addresses to figure out IP address ranges and things like that. So we saw in the documentation that we could make a, one of our private networks that we could make was this 10 and 16 was the largest network we could create. So let's go see some information on that. We have a range of addresses, right? 10 to 10 With this range of usable IPs, um, some IP addresses are not usable because some um, due to networking things. And we can see we have a potential for 65,000 hosts, like we said before. I'm going to divide this. And this is going to divide the IP address spaces in half. In other words, it cuts this um, range of IP addresses in half and shows us what that looks like. So we have a dash 17 here, and that is half of the IP addresses. And the uh, 128017, which is the second half, right? So zeros through 127.255 to 128 uh, to the end of the range, 255, 255. So we can see that we can use a slash 17 notation here to kind of split the IP address in half to get two halves, and each half is about 32,700 uh, potential hosts that can have private network IP addresses. So we'll see why that matters in just a few minutes. So we can head on over here and start making our new module. I'm just going to call this module VPC. So we'll do uh, mictor-p modules VPC, and inside of modules VPC, we're going to touch some files here to create them. They're going to be variables.tf, main.tf, and outputs.tf. And we can see those are here now. So we can just go ahead and start working on these. So just like in the EC2 module, I'll start defining some variables first, and you can kind of see what we're doing here. Back in terminal here, I'm going to run this command. Um, my profile, cloudcast, EC2, describe availability zones for region US East 2. Just like in the last video, we'll see that US East 2 has three availability zones, US East 2A, 2B, and 2C. And that's it for Ohio. So what we're going to do is create a VPC. I'm going to make some assumptions in this module. Um, the assumption is going to be that we are going to work in US East 2. And really, this isn't a hard-coded assumption, but I'm going to set my variable defaults as if we are in US East 2, because that will make working with this module just a little bit easier. So variables, uh, infrastructure environment, just like every other module here, the VPC CIDR, so the IP address range we want for this VPC, for this private network, uh, it can default to slash 16, although we're going to do 17 when we actually create this VPC. But by default, we'll just say the maximum range. And you can override this and do a completely different CIDR range, right? You don't need to use the 10.0.0.0 because there were those three private network IP address ranges that you could possibly pick from. OK, here's the more interesting variables. There's two public subnet numbers, private subnet numbers. So the schema that I'm going to do is for every availability zone in this region, US East 2, I'm going to create two subnets, one subnet for public network traffic and one subnet for private network traffic. The public network traffic will be able to talk to the outside internet. The outside internet will be able to reach resources in those subnets, private subnets, will be for servers talking to each other within the private network. The outside internet will not be able to talk to resources inside of the private subnets. OK, so what is this that I'm doing here? This is no longer a string or even a number. This is a map, and the map contains numbers. So a map in Terraform is kind of like an associative array in PHP and an object in JavaScript. It has keys and values. Um, the keys here are all going to be strings. The values we've defined are going to be numbers. So we're going to say uh, a map of availability zones to just a random number, not really random, but a number that should be used for public setup subnets. And down here is a map of uh, numbers that should be used for private subnets. One, two, three, four, five, six. So US East 2A is going to get uh, a one and a four. So public one, private four, 2B, um, public two, private five, 2C is going to get a public three and a private six. And this is going to help us carve out our IP address space and determine which uh, chunk of IP addresses are going to get defined for each subnet. And we'll see how that works in a second. OK, let's go to the main file, and we'll start building this VPC. OK, so we'll go ahead and just create a VPC. So we have our new resource. The resource is AWS VPC. We're just going to name it VPC. 
and the starter block is going to use the variable we defined from variables. And of course, we add our tags like usual. So we create a VPC. This basically creates an empty VPC with no subnets. And then we can define subnets. So we're going to do something new here to do this. So we're just going to be resource once again. The resource is going to be an AWS subnet. And this helpfully filled out uh, some stuff for us, which is kind of nice. We're going to call this one public. And we're going to make another one called private. And we need a way to define the CIDR block for the subnet. In other words, what subset of our total IP addresses that we have available to us are going to be assigned to this subnet, like what chunk of that total IP address range. So the first thing is first. This is a relatively new syntax. Um, you might see people use count in the past in Terraform. I like to use for each, which is much newer. And we could say for each var dot public subnet numbers. So public subnet numbers is the variable here we set. It's a map of numbers. There's three items in it because we're defaulting to the US East to um, region, which has three availability zones. So we're going to say for each of the three public subnet numbers, create a subnet. So the VPC ID is going to remain constant. So that's fine the way it is. We can define a CIDR block. So how are we going to define a CIDR block here? We're going to do a special function called CIDR subnet. You can see there's other CIDR helpers that Terraform gives us that it provides us. We're just going to do a CIDR subnet. In our case, it's going to be singular, not plural. And it takes some arguments. So um, the AWS VPC dot VPC dot CIDR block. So we're passing uh, the CIDR subnet, the, the CIDR block that this VPC is going to have, right? In our case, it's going to default to 10, 0, 0, 0, uh, slash 16. In our case, we're actually going to use 17 to divide it in half. But in either case, this is what we're passing it, this IP address range. So the total range of IP addresses. And then we're going to ask CIDR subnet, this function, to give us a subset of IP address ranges in there. We're going to give it a number of four. And then we're going to say each dot value. OK, so what is this number four doing here? We're going to head over to the docs for the CIDR subnet function. Prefix, which is the IP address range, new bits, net num. So the prefix is a given CIDR, uh, must be given a CIDR notation, right? So the IP, an IP address range. We have new bits is the number of additional bits with which to extend the prefix. For example, if the given prefix is ending in slash 16 and new bits is four, the resulting subnet has a length of slash 20. In other words, we're going to give this a CIDR notation that has a big IP address range. New bits is going to say how to shrink it down to some subset of subnets. Net num is a whole number that can be represented as a binary integer, no more than new bits, which will be used to populate additional bits added to the prefix. Okay. We are going to see that we are actually further dividing this. So if we do slash 20, update it, we see that's 4,094 IP addresses that we get. And that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to end up with 4,000, about 4,000 hosts or IP addresses that we can use when we divided it with a uh, divided by 20, right? Because we're going to give it a 16 and uh, add four, which will give us a slash 20. And in fact, in reality, I'm going to do slash 17 and then divide and add that to four, right? So that'll be slash 21. We'll see what the result of that is 21. That's going to give us 2046 IP addresses per subnet in our case, which is just fine for me. And then this last number, the net num, is going to basically give us uh, the next range. So we'll be able to further divide this, right? This is 2,000 hosts. And then how do we get to the next chunk of 2,000 after this? That will be the job of the net nums uh, property. OK, so CIDR subnet, the CIDR block, add 4 to the uh, slash whatever. In our case, it will be slash 16 or slash 17 to tell it how to divide up that subnet. And then we'll give it each value, which is the net nums. It'll just basically say, um, It'll basically divide this up further. I think we'll see 10.0.1, 10.0.2, 10.0.3, and so on. All right, we can add some tags here. So this is a public subnet, not private. Role is public. Infrastructure environment managed by Terraform. And we have a kind of a unique item we're making here from subnet. So each dot key and each dot value. So this will be something like US East 2B-6 or something like that. Just basically is a unique name for the subnet here. OK, so that's public. We can go ahead and copy and paste this and create our private one. So that's private subnet numbers. Private subnet role is being a private network, not the public subnet. So just to review our use of for each really quickly, there are two ways to define and create multiple resources within one definition inside of Terraform, and that's for each. And the other is count. 
So in this case, we did for each. This is pretty new. Um, I think version 12.6, 0.12.6 of Terraform brought it out. And then you can also use it with modules as a version 13. For each, it's going to loop over something that is iterable. In our case, it is a map, although it could also be what Terraform calls a set. And it's going to say for each item in that map, create an instance of this resource. And then we have the special word each here where we get a key and a value. And these are the only things available in the each variable here. Because it's a map, there's a key and a value. So like we saw this public subnet numbers, there's a key, US East 2A, and a value 1. So for each, create a module. This is going to create three subnets. And we talked about how this is going to use the value of that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for these variables, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 4 5, 6. It's going to use that number with CIDR subnet to divide up our CIDR block here into smaller subnets. If we check out the documentation for that real quick, for each was added in 12.6. It was added, uh, module support was added in 0.13. To be clear here, we're using the initial usage of that. This is not module usage. This is within a module, but we don't have a for each within our module definition inside of our Cloudcast TF here, right? So I didn't use, I didn't use for each in here. That's the module usage. So the basic syntax is use for each. You can pass it something like a map or a set. A set is something like this just a basic array, in other words, and you use the toSet function to make sure it's a set. And then you have the each object that you can use, and there's just key and value. So pretty simple. You can read more about that if you want. This is the basic usage. If you want to use count instead, you could say something like, I want to create four AWS instances, and that'll do the same thing. It'll just create four. And you have count.index, which is a number zero through three, right, for four items. And that'll let you use that count.index in kind of fancy ways. So so for example, if you had a list of strings of subnet IDs and you use the count, right? You can say the length of var subnet IDs. So uh, creates one server here per each subnet ID. And then for the subnet ID to assign it to, you use the count.index here to grab from um, this list. So var subnet IDs and give me the list item at zero and then one and then two and then three for however many subnets there are in this list of subnets. So that's one way you could use count. Now for each is pretty similar in that we did for each like to a set or to a map and then we just had each key and each value which is basically um, a very similar way to accomplish the same thing so we use for each here and that'll create uh, a few subnets here for each number of items in this map for public and private subnets now the last thing to do is to find some outputs so um, we're going to output the VPC ID, the ID of the VPC we create here so the output VPC ID and its value is going to be just the ID of the VPC give us the VPC CIDR range, so the CIDR block that we decided to use for the network at large. And then we can also output the public subnet, subnets and private subnets that were given to us. All right, so results is a map of subnet ID to CIDR block, e.g. Uh, the subnet ID we created, and the IP address range that we set, such as uh, 10, 0, 1, such 4. And we'll have three of these for public and three of these for private, right? So one public and one private per availability zone. So this, in this way, we could iterate through our public and private subnets if other modules need to be added to a specific subnet. Let's go to our Cloudcast TF file and we can do module. I'm just going to go ahead and call this VPC. The source is modules slash VPC, and we can fill in the variables at once. So infrastructure env, staging or actually sorry that's var.imp.env and vpc cider we're going to use 10.0.0.0 slash 17 we're going to give it half of the total uh, ip address space that we potentially could now why would you ever want to do that and not just get the full amount of ip addresses you could if you've ever heard of vpc peering vpc peering is when two vpcs or more can communicate with each other which is something you can do in AWS, but the IP addresses that are shared in the two VPCs cannot overlap. Otherwise, the networking has no idea where to go if two servers have the same IP address. So to give yourself room in order for two VPCs to be peering, in other words, they can talk to each other as if they're on the same private network, they can't have overlapping IP addresses, so not using the full range of IP addresses that you can is a way to give yourself some insurance in case you end up doing that in the future. If you did not understand that, do not worry about it at all. All right, we have more variables here, public subnet numbers and private subnet numbers that we could define, but we're going to leave the defaults because these defaults are good for our US East 2, and that's what we are going to use. Let's do terminal. We'll head back up to our root module here, Terraform plan, and let's see what we can do var file is variables.tfvars. Actually, you know what? I did plan, but I need to init first. 
So that initialized the VPC module. All good. Now let's go ahead and see what a plan does. And I think I've destroyed the infrastructure between this video and the last. So we have 13 to add. Create a bit of stuff. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what we see here. So we have EC2. It's going to create our EC2 servers. And then we'll finally get down to our module VPC. So it's going to create a subnet for US East 2A. The side of the block, look, this has been calculated, right? So 10, 0, 32, 21. And then it's going to create another private one for US East 2B. Again, it has a different IP address range. And then another private one for US East 2C with yet another IP address range. And then our public ones, US 2A, uh, B, and C, right? 10, 0, 8, 0, 2, 1. 10, 0, 16, 0, 2, 1. 10, 0, 24, 2, 1. And then we have the VPC it's creating itself at the IP address we set here, 10, 0, 0, 0, slash 17. And that is it. Okay, that is good, but we're not finished there, but we are finished with this video. In the next video, we're going to add a few more items to this VPC module. We could go ahead and create it as it is right now, but I'm going to add an internet gateway and a NAT gateway so that our private subnets actually have an internet gateway that allows them to talk to the public network, and that makes them the public subnet. And the private subnets will get a NAT gateway, which will allow items in the private network to talk to the outside internet without the outside internet being able to connect to those servers. And we'll see how to put all of that together so that our servers are using this VPC, this, this private network that we've created, and then we can move on to create some other infrastructure.